Welcome to the AI Research Roundup. I'm Alex. Today we're looking at a paper trending on X, published on July 29th, 2025, so about six days ago. This paper introduces Alpha Earth Foundations, which is a new type of embedding field model. An embedding field model is a type of AI that creates a highly general geospatial representation, basically a universal map that can understand and combine information from different sources over space and time. The paper is titled Alpha Earth Foundations, an embedding field model for accurate and efficient global mapping from sparse label data. And the results are really impressive, reducing mapping errors by an average of about 23.9%. And the reaction on X, formerly Twitter, has been really insightful. One thread breaks down how the model is similar to text embeddings, but also uniquely handles temporal data, which is a key innovation here. The user points out that these new geospatial embeddings allow scientists to do things they normally do, like map land use or detect climate change but with much, much less data. Another post highlights how this new AI model integrates petabytes of Earth observation data to, and I'm quoting here, revolutionize global mapping and monitoring. So a lot of excitement. All right, so this first figure really drives home the performance claims we were just talking about. This top chart compares Alpha Earth Foundations to the next best model across 15 different mapping applications. The y-axis shows the error decrease, so any value above one means Alpha Earth Foundations is more accurate. And as you can see, every single bar is above that line. This indicates it consistently outperforms all other approaches, whether it's for mapping U.S. trees, Canada crops, or land use change in Africa, a really impressive result. So how does the model actually achieve these impressive results? Well, this diagram gives us a high-level look at the architecture. Over on the left, we see how it takes in raw data from multiple sources, like Sentinel and Landsat, over a period of time. This information then flows through a series of special blocks, detailed in the lower half, called space-time precision blocks. These blocks are a core innovation, using separate operators to handle spatial, temporal, and high-precision details. The whole system is then trained with a clever teacher-student setup to ensure consistency. Building on that architecture, this table details the 15 evaluation datasets used to really put the model to the test. You can see the incredible diversity of these tasks, from land cover and land use change in the U.S. and Europe, to identifying specific crop types in Canada and Ethiopia. The evaluation types include both classification, which is sorting data into categories, and regression, which involves predicting a continuous value like evapotranspiration. This wide range of tests is what makes the performance we saw earlier so robust and meaningful. Okay, so let's look at a few of these evaluations in more detail. The results are pretty stark. For instance, the top chart shows Canada crop classification, where Alpha Earth Foundations clearly outperforms the other models. Even more dramatically, the middle chart on evapotranspiration measured with R2, a score of how well predictions match reality, shows that it's basically the only model that works at all. The visual maps on the right confirm these numbers, showing much cleaner and more coherent results from the new model. So a key question is, why is this model so good? Well, these charts really get into the effects of scaling. The plots on the left show that as you increase the number of training observations, the model's accuracy just keeps getting better, consistently outperforming other approaches. Then the bar charts on the right show that adding more types of data, like radar and LIDAR on top of optical images, also boosts performance. This combination of data quantity and source diversity is what really seems to drive its power. And this table here really breaks down that data diversity we were just talking about. It's not just standard optical images from satellites like Sentinel-2 and Landsat. The model also pulls in C-band and L-band synthetic aperture radar, or SAR, a technology that can see through clouds and at night and LIDAR, which uses lasers to map things like forest height. Add to that climate data, gravity fields, and even text from Wikipedia. It's this fusion of so many different ways of observing the Earth that gives the model its power. So to wrap up, Alpha Earth Foundations really leverages this immense data diversity to create a powerful general purpose representation of the Earth's surface. This embedding field model excels at mapping tasks even with very sparse labels. And the authors plan to release global data layers, which is fantastic news for researchers. That's it for this episode.